All right, welcome back. This is Jamie Oichel from runningrestaurants.com. We bring you the tips, tools, and techniques you need to make your restaurant more profitable and successful. I've got a great one question with episode for you today with Jordy Murphy of Phobisoft and Cypress Hospitality Group. Here we go. Jordy, your book, Opening a Restaurant from Inception to Reception, uh, covers a huge amount of tips for, for operators, right? Shortcuts, tips, great stuff. Um, but if you had maybe five, 10 minutes to give a cliff note speech about it or, you know, just an overview, what would you be sure to include? Well, like Bill Marriott said, location, location, location. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that it's probably concept, 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 and food, food, food. Uh, you, there's no boundaries to entry to the restaurant industry. If you sign a lease and put a kitchen in, um, I had a, I had a client call me one time, uh, that said, I just built this restaurant. I want to hire a general manager and a chef because I don't want to be in the restaurant business. And my <laughs> answer was, if you hire a general manager and a chef, you are in the restaurant business. Uh, but what I think happens a lot is, someone doesn't con think through their concept from from inception to reception they uh you get a great chef that knows how to cook um but maybe he hasn't costed out his menu i mean he's putting great food out but they could be de i mean i had a chef one time um who's end up being a very good friend of mine but he was taking 30 pounds of mushrooms and reducing it to a quart of mushroom sauce well, look at what that cost and look at what that cost on a, on a, and that wasn't even, that went with a chicken dish. Um, so the cost of that dish was, was ridiculous. Um, and that's where I think that uh, people need to spend a little more time um, thinking of what they're going to do and then executing what they're doing. Um, we, you know, through one of it, through, through Phobisoft, we have, a thing that's called the theoretical food cost. So you can cost out each item on your menu. And if, say, theoretically, if you just looked at the menu and said, okay, I'm going to run a 30% food cost in this restaurant that I'm doing. But you could have some lost leaders, something that might run a 42 or 43%. Uh, and it's one of the hottest sellers. So all of a sudden, your 30% that you want to run for this restaurant, well, the majority of everything you sell is running at a 40 or 42. Next thing you know, your food cost is 37 or 38. There goes all your profit. And this happens to people time and time again. Um, I think that some operators will look at their restaurant and say, well, my food cost is high. I need to raise my prices. Well, you might not need to raise all the prices. You just look at the items that are running the higher food costs that might be the best sellers, and you could raise that a little bit and brings your food cost down. Um, another aspect is to, to know what your labor is going to cost you. Uh, and it's hard because you don't necessarily know what your sales are going to be. I think that a lot of people that think they're going to do better than they are. And I think that people need to be realistic when they're going to go open a restaurant and say, you know, what do I need to do to break even? Um, and, and if they think that's feasible and they can do what they need to to break even, then you run your numbers, your labor costs, your food costs, your, your other expenses um, off that. Also, I think that people don't necessarily budget enough going in. Uh, I was a few years ago, uh, got called into a situation where these people were building a restaurant and they were actually remodeling a restaurant. Uh, the re remodeling cost was $650,000. <clears> it ended up costing them $840,000. But initially they thought, well, we're going to open this restaurant for $650,000. Well, that's the construction cost. They didn't have the line items in there of the POS system, the food and beverage inventory, the training labor, the opening labor, the china glass and silver, the furniture. I mean, there's a host of other it costs for a logo, your business cards, your menus and letterhead. And those aren't in your construction costs. And they're, depending on what you're doing, I mean, that can be as much or you know 20 or 25 percent 
of what it's going to cost you to, to build out the restaurant. Uh, and that's where I think people get in trouble. They, it, it's exciting and people get anxious and they're like, I, you know, I want to do this. I want to get open as soon as I can. So they start moving maybe a little faster without all their ducks in a row. Yeah, I want a lot of stuff there and I, and I jotted down some stuff, but I, I want to talk about that excitement factor. You have folks opening new restaurants all the time, right? With hopes and dreams and a lot of times not enough planning and certainly not enough, a lot enough money to get started. But that, that excitement part and the grand opening part and you're busy for the first couple weekends and home run, this is going to be great. And I've been to these places and then I come in three, three months later and it's quiet and it's no longer exciting. And now you're probably, now you've got to run a restaurant, right? It's probably easy in the first couple of weeks. I'm sure you've seen similar. How, how do you talk about that long-term planning? Cause it's not, it's not a short run game. It's not a quick hit thing to be in, in this business. And so you, you talked about that dude who, did, who wanted to be a restaurant, restaurant business, but doesn't want to, doesn't want to be there. And that's not a, at all how it works. So, so a few more tips to share. What do you think? Well, I think uh, uh, marketing plans uh, and, and a marketing plan that goes out. I mean, do you have the ability to do private parties? Are you going to hire a, a catering sales manager? Um, and not just a, not just a person that's a, that's a phone answer. Uh, it's someone that will actually go out and get into the community. You know, one of the other things that people uh, don't pay attention to initially is they're so busy and they're so excited and everything gets going that for the first month or two, they're not paying attention to the financials. You know, everybody says, well, restaurants lose money for the first whatever, six months, year, whatever. And that's not true. Um, operators make money from day one because they're getting a shot at everybody. They're the busiest that they're going to be. And if they have their act together, they're going to be able to stockpile a little bit of that profit for, you know, because you're going to hit a peak and then it's going to level off. The key is that it, that it levels off and then you build, build, build on top of that. So you have consistent business, but it's, you don't sit around four months later and say, oh my gosh, we've slowed down. What do I do now? You know, if that's the case, you should have had the marketing plan done way before that. And what happens with the excitement, people get too busy and, and they think, I'll do that later. But you have to make sure that you handle all of this stuff before because sometimes there is no later and you're right, you are busy. Yeah. So, I mean, I had my little mute button there, but, but I, listen, I want to echo that story because this happens time and time again. And so um, exactly what you're talking about, having a marketing plan ready to go from day one, because we went to a new restaurant here and it was not the case. And I, and I, and I asked the owner, I said, Oh man, this is great. You're busy. Are you capturing all these names, you know, for people to do marketing? And their, and their answer was a, bl was a blank stare. And I was like, Oh no. Okay. Okay. So don't miss this opportunity to get all those people um, onto a, a marketing list so you can market to them you know, next week and next month and five months, five months from now, you've got to capture that. So forget about that missed opportunity. And if you're listening to this as a restaurant operator, forget about what happened in the past, but think about today. You're going to have a uh, hundred people come in your door today. Are you capturing any of that data for future marketing? You know, what are you doing to ensure you get those people back in and, you know, don't just expect that they're going to love you and want to come back on their own because they can, because there's literally 500 places I can go and eat lunch and dinner in my small city. Forget about a big city. Forget about traveling. Forget about all that stuff. So uh, as we wrap up, if you were to, I love the marketing piece and I get excited about that stuff. But if you, I'll give you one last tip to share with operators that are starting or midway through and need, uh, need some advice. So some parting wisdom. What do you think? I would say have a marketing plan. Don't overspend on too much advertising. I've never really believed in print advertising. And then there's a lot of digital platforms out there, but do your homework and make sure that you feel that you, that you choose the correct digital platform to capture that business, to capture that customer, to keep them coming back. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, and we're, we're in a landscape now where there is tech that can help with a lot of that stuff. It's cheap. It's, it, you couldn't have done it years ago, but now you can do all that stuff. So, so Jordy, I appreciate it. So are you, you guys help restaurants all over the country with both placing people and finding great people and giving technology solutions. Where can they go? And in addition to that, of course, the book, you know, tell us, tell us where to find stuff. Uh, well, the book that I wrote, um, the URL is buildyourrestaurant.com. Um, 
and it has a tremendous amount of tips and such in there. And also I would look at some of the platforms that are out there uh, technology wise to capture customers. Everybody's going to tell you they're going to put more butts in seats, but you know, do your homework and make sure you pick the right one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love I, I love that URL. I wish I wish I had grabbed that years ago. Build that. So so folks, <laughs> find Jordy's book, buildyourrestaurant.com. Uh, folks, that was Jordy, Jordy Murphy, who is the founder of Phobisoft, as well as Cypress Hospitality Group, has a terrific book for you with a whole bunch of tips. And again, you can find that at www.buildyourrestaurant.com. I appreciate it, Jordy. Uh, folks, uh, for more information about restaurant marketing, operations, service people and tech tips, you can stay tuned to us here at runningrestaurants.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks.